The episode begins with the protagonist saying that she always knew that her beauty didn't exist, and everyone made a point of making that clear. When she was at school, things weren't easy. The girl was nicknamed Cupcake, and every time her classmates said the word, she ran to get some from the girl's canteen. Hyun Bin is a boy who works in the school cafeteria, and the protagonist thinks he is cute. One day Hyun Bin finds her listening to music while returning to the classroom with the cupcakes and takes the girl's phone. He is excited to know that she likes heavier music because that's his style too. Her classmates complain about Juk Young taking too long with the dumplings, and when they look out the window, they notice that the girl is talking to the boy from the cafeteria. Later, when lunch is being served, the protagonist works up the courage and invites Hyun Bin to meet. As the boy ends up accepting, Juk Young begins to think that they can get involved. At night, the girl prepares shaped cookies for her lover, prepares a box with snacks and tickets for a show, along with a letter declaring herself to Hyun Bin. The protagonist's father is having money problems the man invested money he didn't have in a business that was flawed, and now other people he convinced to do the same are demanding it, but he hadn't told anyone. The next day, Juk Young takes his box with surprises to school, and when he ends up leaving the classroom, Sami, the most beautiful girl in school, opens it to see what it is and is shocked to read the statement that the girl prepared. So Sami goes to the cafeteria to talk to Hyun Bin and says that she was very upset when she found out that he was dating Juk Young because he has such a pretty face and the girl is on a level far below him. Meanwhile, in the protagonist's mother's beauty salon, we see the men that the girl's father owes money to come to demand her mother, and at that moment, things start to go wrong in the eyes of some. Juk Young confesses to Hyun Bin and gives her heart. The boy is a little mean in his response and tells her to be smart and think about whether he would date someone with her appearance. What they didn't expect was that Sami would be filming everything, and Juk Young ran out of the place crying. When she is about to jump, she changes her mind, and a boy appears. He pulls her so she doesn't fall, and since she lost her glasses when she was pulled, Juk Young can't tell the face of the person she tried to help her. Then the boy gives her a lecture, asks if she doesn't think about her loved ones and how they would be after she leaves, and speaks as if he had recently lost someone. After helping Juk Young get down safely and get into a taxi, the protagonist tells him that whoever he lost, that person wouldn't want him to suffer for too long, so he has to cheer up. At home, Juk Young's mother is furious after finding out what her father did and that they now owe money. Her children try to hold her back, but the woman doesn't want to see him or paint him gold anymore and sends him away. The only one who ends up happy with the idea of returning to live in their old house and changing schools is the protagonist the rest of the family is sad about having to return to a lower place than they were now. Juk Young faces this challenge as a chance to change everything, starting with her reputation and her appearance, so she buys makeup and watches videos on how to use it. However, when she shows up at school like this, she becomes a laughing stock again, as she has a little heavy blush and looks like a clown. But thankfully, she has a few days to learn how to take better care of herself before showing up at her new school. The protagonist learns how to pluck her eyebrows, take care of her face, and apply makeup products correctly. The protagonist's father moved with the family to their old house, and her first day starts better than she could have imagined everyone thinks she's cute. Suho is the one who is going to introduce her to the school. Ju Kyung thinks the boy is very handsome, and a small detail ends up happening while she is lost in her thoughts. The girl ends up hitting her face on the back of his uniform and leaving it stained with base. When Suho realizes that his clothes are stained, she gives them to the protagonist and asks her to fix them. Since it was the same clothes she got dirty, the boy is not at all friendly towards people at school. Ju Kyung makes friends on the first day who take her out to eat and have fun, something our protagonist wasn't used to, and the girl feels on cloud 9. Later, when she is at home, the protagonist's brother starts a war against her, as the boy takes photos of her face without makeup and glasses. He intends to show people these photos, or she can avoid this by buying a new edition of a comic she released and some food he likes to maintain his reputation, which Ju Kyung accepts. The protagonist goes to the comic book prince to get what she promised her youngest son however, it turns out that it is the same comic that Suho was waiting for, and the two fight over it. When Ju Kyung realizes that she is her school's hottie, she gives up what she owes her brother because she is afraid of being recognized. However, as the girl had just returned, the store owner surprised her and prepared some ramen for her, so she ended up getting a little more than she wanted. Ju Kyung realizes that the boy didn't recognize that she's from his school, so she starts to disguise herself and ask questions as if she doesn't know him. Soon after she finishes, the protagonist takes her things, except the comic, and runs back to her house. Suho is thoughtful the last time he saw the girl was the day she tried to take her own life, and now at the comic book store, she was acting like she didn't remember him or what happened. The next day, 
Ju Kyung gets a ride with his sister to go to school, then Hee Kyung goes for a coffee and becomes interested in a teacher encouraging a little child to go to class. When the protagonist is buying more makeup products, her old colleagues pass by her and don't recognize her, but it was a trigger for the girl who runs out of the store. A biker who was running away from other boys on motorcycles almost ran over the girl. Being on the run, she ends up leaving the helmet with Ju Kyung and running away however, he ends up cornered. The protagonist helps him by activating the siren at the scene as if the police were arriving, so the boys run to escape, leaving him behind. Ju Kyung, after helping him, ends up running to her house too, and without paying attention, ends up carrying the boy's helmet with her. We now see Su Ho dealing with his relationship with his father it turns out that the man was with another woman when the boy was little and his mother was fighting for her own life. This was one of the reasons why Su Ho found the man's character dubious, and now dealing with him has become a complicated task. His father appears when the boy is training in martial arts and challenges him to a fight. Su Ho ends up winning, and then the man asks if his son doesn't want to move back in with him, but the boy says he doesn't want to interfere with his love life and asks him not to show up by surprise anymore he wouldn't want people to find out who his father is. Returning to the protagonist, her brother asks her to go to the comic book store and return one to the owner. The girl arrives at the place completely disguised for fear of running into Suho however, she relaxes after the owner says that the boy doesn't appear on weekends. However, Suho goes to the store that day, and when Ju Kyung tries to hide it, he tells her that he knows the girl knows him. When Suho adds that he recognized her the moment he saw her, the protagonist thinks he's talking about school, not the day on the roof, but since she wasn't wearing her glasses, she can't even imagine where she's from and starts to get confused. Afraid that your secret will be revealed. Ju Kyung makes a request to the boy that he doesn't tell anyone about it even though the two aren't thinking about the same thing, he accepts. To formalize the agreement, the protagonist makes him sign, promising that she won't tell anyone. Suho recognizes the oath from one of the comics, and soon the two discover that they like the same things. The boy has been after a signed comic book that she has had for a long time, and Ju Kyung bribes him with it, making Suho sign the agreement, buy her drinks, and even eat ramen together. After all this, the protagonist says that she will deliver the book on Monday and gives him a collectible sticker for the boy, as he had said it was her birthday. When Suho gets home, he puts the sticker on his bedside lamp. On Monday, the protagonist packs the bag that will deliver Suho's things, his soiled uniform, and the promised book. On the bus going to school, Ju Kyung falls asleep on the way, and a man uses this as an advantage to photograph under the girl's skirt. When her friend notices, she starts screaming in the vehicle, and the man runs out. But Su Jin doesn't let it go and runs after the boy until she manages to stop him and calls the local security to arrest him. When the girl gets back on the bus, the protagonist thanks her and says that she would like to have a boyfriend like her friend. At school, Ju Kyung discovers that the boy on the motorcycle whose helmet she ended up with studies at the same institution as her and that he also has a relationship with Suho. Her friends say that the two were best friends, but then something happened and they never got along again. It seems that Seo Joon was away for a few days due to being involved in his mother's health issues. The protagonist spends the entire period winking at Suho and handing him things he likes at meals, believing that he knows that she is the girl from the comic book store. At one point, Ju Kyung asks him to meet her on the roof. Suho doesn't understand the intimacy that this girl thinks she has with him and sends her the real one. At this point, the protagonist realizes that they weren't talking about the same thing when he signed the contract and asks him if he's ever seen her outside. From school, Suho says no. Regardless of the secret that the boy promised to keep, Ju Kyung runs to retrieve the bag she gave him with the book so that he doesn't find out who she is, and luckily for her reputation, she succeeds. At home, Hee Kyung asks her sister about a teacher who she says is cute and works at the girls' school however, the protagonist doesn't remember anyone who is like that. Su Ho calls Ju Kyung and remembers that the girl has something to deliver to him. He gives her the address of a place and says he will wait for her there. However, the protagonist doesn't know if he called the ugly Ju Kyung from the comic book store or the pretty one from school. To avoid being discovered, she decides to go with the helmet that she still has, which belongs to Seo Joon. Upon arriving at the place wearing a helmet, she explains that it is for safety in case she falls, and Suho asks her, since she was too sick to try to postpone, how she pedaled to the designated place. In the end, the protagonist gives him the book, and as she already knows that the boy was looking for the ugly version of her, she decides to go to the bathroom and take off her helmet, then she returns to the table. Suho got her number from the comic book store owner, and Ju Kyung tries to start the conversation to find out what secret he was referring to, but she can't find out anything. 
The next day, the protagonist gives Suho her clean uniform, and in physical education class, Seo Jun asks her to return his helmet. Later, her friend is upset that her boyfriend, perhaps he forgot that it is their 100-day anniversary together however, upon entering the classroom, the girl receives a surprise that several members of the class helped prepare and even a serenade of love, with a little dance and everything. When they are going to kiss, one of the boy's friends decides to throw the cake at the couple however, they manage to escape, and the one who ends up dirty in this story is Ju Kyung. The girls in the class try to help her and suggest that she go wash her face in the bathroom however, the protagonist doesn't want her makeup to come off, so Ju Kyung runs to the bathroom to sort it out herself she just didn't expect it to be full. The girl ends up trapped with all her classmates around trying to help her she thinks that now that it's over, everyone will discover that she's ugly. However, when Su Ho appears, the boy wraps his uniform around the protagonist's head and takes her to the other bathroom that is empty for her to clean and tidy herself. While waiting for Ju Kyung to get ready, Seo Jun appears to torment Su Ho's life. The two boys exchange barbs, and Su Ho asks him to leave him alone and mind his own business. When the protagonist is ready and goes to thank Su Ho for helping her, she comes across Seo Jun, who reminds her that he wants his helmet back. Upon returning to the classroom, things continue as normal, and Ju Kyung begins to wonder if Su Ho helped her by knowing how she looks without makeup. The girl begins to create theories and consults her brother to see if it makes sense. The youngest agrees that it could be that and adds that Su Ho could use that against her. When she gets home, the protagonist's cell phone starts ringing, and it's Su Ho. The boy asks her to meet him at the comic book store. Ju Kyung at the scene tries to invent a story to convince him that she is not the same person from her school she says that she is going to live in Canada, which is why she no longer studies for now. However, the boy knows who she really is. Is, and let you know. Even after saying that the girl's number is the same as the one she studies at her school, the protagonist continues to say that it's not her but her cousin. Then Suho approaches and lets down her hair, then takes off her glasses and says she's sure that Ju Bao, as she had presented herself without makeup, is actually Ju Kyung. Everything is confirmed when the protagonist's mother appears at the store's door and starts shouting her name, calling her to go home. Ju Kyung runs off, leaving her bracelet behind and Suho guarding it. The boy knew from that day of the bag with the book inside at school who the protagonist was he just hadn't told her yet, and he didn't get her number from the owner of the comic book store, but rather from a classmate. Suho confirmed that they were the same person the day she went to meet him wearing a helmet and then took it off. As he had called Ju Kyung and showed up to Ju Bao, it was easy. The next day, the protagonist tries to maintain control of the situation and meets Suho before class. She asks, actually begs, that the boy not say anything about her appearance, and in return, she will do whatever he wants. Suho ends up accepting and abusing the girl a little, asking for different things inside and outside of school. Meanwhile, Hee Kyung, the protagonist's sister, is in front of the school watching the movement, hoping to see that teacher she was interested in again. Things turn out better than she thought, and she ends up helping the man with his car, then giving her number and saying she can thank her by buying her dinner. Returning to school, Su Jin comes across Seo Jun charging the protagonist with the helmet, and because she doesn't know the context, she goes to him later and asks him to leave the girl alone. Then, something strange happens to Su Jin she receives a message from her father asking her to go home early because they are going to eat with someone else, and the girl becomes restless. She manages to calm down when she talks to her friend, but not about the subject. Ju Kyung searches at home for the helmet that she should take to school the next day, but runs into a problem. Her brother decides to sell the object on an app. The two end up fighting, and in the end, their mother makes the brothers apologize and cut one of the other's toenails, saying they love each other. After several requests from Su Ho, Ju Kyung is surprised in the middle of one. So that the two can be even, he tells her to perform in the school talent show, as this is what the protagonist wants most, and ends up accepting. However, Ju Kyung ends up drinking a lot of water while in line to introduce herself and ends up letting everyone pass so she can go to the bathroom. When she returns, she goes straight to the stage without realizing that the auditions are over and her performance begins. In the end, it was a meeting with the school board several teachers and the principal were present, and the girl left the place very embarrassed. At night, Suho makes one more request to the protagonist he wants her to pick up a comic from the store and take it to the playground. When the girl leaves the establishment, it starts to rain heavily. She starts running to get there faster and accidentally bumps into a man who was drinking. This boy starts insulting Ju Kyung about his appearance no matter how much the girl apologizes, he doesn't stop. As soon as she arrives in Suho, the protagonist lets her feelings out and says that it's not her fault she was born ugly, and she doesn't understand why people don't like her for that. 
The boy notices that her knee is scraped, so he gives her a coat so that Ju Kyung, who is all wet, can warm up and look for a bandage. While Su Ho is bandaging the protagonist's wound, Seo Jun watches them from afar. The next day at school, Seo Jun tells Su Ho that he must be happy even after taking his friend's life and throws the boy's food tray on the floor. Then he goes towards Ju Kyung and sits next to her, saying that he is going to have his meal with the girl. Which awakens anger in Su Ho, who takes him out of the chair, and the two start to fight, but Su Ho didn't have the courage to hit Seo Jun, unlike him, who left his face bruised. The director makes them both stop and takes them to his room. We see a bit of Seo Jun's past. The two had a friend named Se Yun who was going through some media exposure, and the spotlight was following him. In the last conversation Seo Jun had with this boy, he said that if he told Su Ho, he would believe him and everything would be fine. However, in the next scene, we see Seo Jun at his desperate friend's funeral. Returning to the protagonist, everyone starts to think that the fight happened because they both liked the girl, and the three became the topic of the moment. Seo Jun and Su Ho talk on the court later. Seo Jun tells the boy never to mention their friend's name again, as he is sure that Su Ho will believe what he says. To cool his head, Su Ho goes to the comic book store and remembers when he was little and was crying one day, and Ju Kyung made fun of him until he laughed. The next day, Ju Kyung and her friends are setting up a study group, and Su Jin invites Su Ho to join them, but the boy denies it. Su Ah arranged a blind date for the protagonist, and the girl is excited. The two arranged to meet at the cinema and continued exchanging messages. As Su Ho was next to Ju Kyung on the bus, he kept paying attention to their conversation. Tu via the protagonist's cell phone. Meanwhile, Seo Jun's mother has been released from the hospital, and she goes straight to Ju Kyung's mother's salon. The two have been friends for a long time. This visit just wasn't very good for the protagonist, who was there without makeup, and so Seo Jun couldn't see her clean face, so she put a clay mask on her face. The boy thinks it's hilarious and takes photos of Ju Kyung. When their mothers are talking, Seo Jun's mother comments that he loves riding his motorcycle, despite having stopped recently at her request, so the protagonist reveals that the boy continues to ride, and very quickly. With that, the woman asks her to keep an eye on her son and let her know every time she sees him on a motorcycle. The next day, while Ju Kyung is on his date, Su Ho is starting to take his math olympiads test. However, when the lovebirds enter the cinema, the boy is hidden in the movie theater and watches them. It turns out he dropped his at the beginning and went straight to the scene. At one point, Su Ho sees the boy hugging the girl and going to give her a kiss. His reaction was the most unexpected of all he jumps across the benches and separates the lovebirds. However, it turns out that it wasn't Ju Kyung and the guy of your date, but other people. At the end of the meeting, the boy says that he would like to take the protagonist home, but he couldn't, as he has a meeting with his class. However, it was a lie, and the man finds another girl as soon as Ju Kyung leaves. Su Ho, who saw everything and intimidated him in the bathroom, tells the boy to send messages to Ju Kyung dismissing her and that if he thinks about deceiving her again, it will have consequences. At home, the protagonist discovered through her mother that Seo Jun worked to pay his school fees and even part of the hospital bills. The woman is afraid that he will continue riding his motorcycle, as she lost her husband, the father of Seo Jun, in a traffic accident. Later, Hee Kyung receives a message from that teacher, and the man says that taking her out to eat would take up too much of the woman's time, so he will send her an amount to her account so Hee Kyung can choose something. The next day at school, Ju Kyung catches Seo Jun showing something to his friends and thinks it's that photo of her with a mask on her face, so he takes his motorcycle key from the boy's pocket and runs away. Seo Jun goes after her, and when he catches up with her, Su Ho arrives to see what is happening. To avoid another fight between the two, the protagonist returns the key and tells them to go their separate ways. Later, Ju Kyung meets his friends after school to join the study group. When they arrive at the place, they find Su Ho waiting for them, and the boy decides to participate. Afterwards, the group goes to karaoke and has fun. Seo Jun is also there, but in another room. We find out in the next scene that Hee Kyung works at Su Ho's father's company, and the one-year anniversary of the boy's friend Se Yun's death is approaching. As he was an artist, the company is thinking about a way to honor him. Returning to the protagonist, she ends up meeting Seo Jun outside the establishment, and the two come across that group of boys who chased Seo Jun the first time they met. Without knowing what to do, the girl starts running and pulls Seo Jun with her. Upon seeing the scene of the two being chased, Su Ho starts running after them to help them. However, Ju Kyung and the boy manage to lose the boys, and in the end, it ends up being left to Su Ho. He manages to defend himself at first, but then the boys hold him back so the leader can teach him a lesson until the police arrive. 
Meanwhile, Seo Joon ends up giving the protagonist a ride on his motorcycle, as the guys stole her purse with her wallet and cell phone inside because they couldn't find her. Suho was waiting for her in front of the comic book store, and when he sees the two approaching, he questions why Seo Joon gave Joo Kyung a ride however, the conversation is interrupted when Hee Kyung approaches, staggering because he has had a few drinks. The boys help the girl take her sister home, and in the end, Hee Kyung spills everything on Suho's jacket, who is paralyzed by the situation. The next day at school, when Seo Joon notices that Suho is approaching the protagonist, he approaches her first and hands her the key to his motorcycle, then says that he will listen to her from that moment on. The girl didn't quite understand what he meant, and when she goes after the boy, Suho asks her not to go and says he has something to tell her however, in the end, the boy says nothing about anything. In the classroom, Joo Kyung asks Seo Joon why he gave him the key to his motorcycle, and the boy says it's so he won't be in danger of riding it and is following what he had told him previously, that he would only listen to the protagonist from that moment on. The boy hands Joo Kyung a juice, and despite the nice gesture, the girl informs him that she likes the strawberry flavor. In the laboratory, Suho does something new and invites the protagonist to sit next to her, then gives her strawberry juice. When they are in the cafeteria, Seo Joon sits next to Joo Kyung, and the girl asks him to leave. Obviously, the annoyingly cute guy doesn't move, and the two even end up being photographed at the moment he holds the protagonist's hair. Then, to get it over with, the girl gives Seo Joon the key to her motorcycle however, he says he doesn't need to do that, as he parked it in front of the protagonist's house. Surprised by the news, the the girl ends up accidentally spitting the rest of the food that was in her mouth onto his face. Meanwhile, we see Go Woon singing in the school choir. The teacher informs everyone in front of everyone that the girl will be the one to perform the solo in the performance, and she is super happy. However, not for long, as she is intimidated by other girls to give up while she rehearses alone and the protagonist watches everything from afar. Returning home after class, on the bus, Chu Kyung notices that Su Jin's hands are chapped and applies moisturizer to her friend's skin to help. Suddenly the bullies from her old school enter the bus, and the protagonist's heart stops. Su Jin notices that the girl has become nervous and decides that they should get off the vehicle. Her friend confronts Sami, telling her to get out of her way, and the two sit at the stop. Su Jin says she has no reason for Ju Kyung to be like this if she acts more confident, things will be different next time. At night, Su Ho thinks about sending a message to the protagonist to discuss something with her but ends up giving up. However, when she puts her cell phone in her pocket, she ends up calling the girl by accident, and the person who answers is Ju Kyung's brother. The protagonist was taking a shower, and when she leaves, the two start to have those normal sibling arguments. When the girl realizes that Suho is listening to everything, she gets embarrassed and hangs up the call, but when she enters her room, she returns to him. The boy invites her to the playground and asks her to take his coat that Hee Kyung had soiled by vomiting on it that day. At the playground, Ju Kyung arrives a little late and finds Suho trying to get the attention of a kitten, but the little animal only goes with the protagonist. The girl says that she started feeding him because she felt sorry for the kitten being alone and having no family that's how she won him over, and Suho says that she doesn't have a family either and reveals that he lives alone when Ju Kyung asks about it. The protagonist didn't take the boy's clothes because they hadn't dried yet and apologizes for that. Ju Kyung starts to say goodbye when Suho finds a basketball, and the two start practicing shooting. Afterwards, Suho takes the protagonist home and says that if she gives him the key to Seo Jun's motorcycle, the boy will return it to the owner. The next day, the motorcycle is no longer in front of his house, and Ju Kyung believes that Suho has really resolved the issue. In physical education class, the protagonist's classmates talk about a basketball match she is going to have, and on one side we have Suho's team on the other Seo Jun's team, the court is going to catch fire. Later, Seo Jun receives a call informing him that his motorcycle was towed. The boy doesn't believe that Ju Kyung could have done it however, Suho approaches and says that he was the one who committed the act of reporting it. Meanwhile, in the school bathroom, Go Woon is intimidated by those choir girls and ends up being surprised when the protagonist enters the room and throws a bucket of water at the girls. Ju Kyung says that she is the girl's sister and that it is for them to leave them alone. Su Ah and Su Jin enter the bathroom and defend their friend. Su Jin makes a capoeira move that almost hits them in the face to keep the girls quiet. On the roof, the protagonist consoles Go Woon and says that she shouldn't give up on performing because of the things those girls said, because her talent is unique and beautiful. Ju Kyung knows how she feels more than anyone and is happy to have helped the girl if someone had done that for her too, maybe things would have been different. At the bus stop, when Suho asks her what she is doing, the protagonist says that she is watching a makeup tutorial to help a person who reminds her of her past. 
The girl adds that she also looks ugly without makeup. And Suho comments that the girl is pretty without makeup. Then Jukyung's bus arrives, and she gets on. The protagonist thinks that it can't be possible that he likes her, but decides to test something and ask him out. To see a film after the school festival, which, to his surprise, he accepts. When getting off the bus, Suho receives a call from Seo Jun asking where he is. Then we see the two talking, and Suho gives him the key to the boy's motorcycle. He then confesses to liking Joo Kyung and asks that he doesn't use the girl to get revenge on him. Seo Jun thinks that because Suho didn't answer Seyun's call the night he took his own life, the boy can't be happy and asks him what the protagonist would think of him if she knew he ended up helping his own friend take his life. Hee Kyung is waiting for that teacher to leave school, and as she doesn't want his money but time with the man, she invites him out for dinner that same night. The conversation between the two flows perfectly, and at one point, when Hee Kyung goes to clean the teacher's mouth, he ends up saying that he requires a lot of care, which causes the man who has his mouth full to accidentally spit in the woman's face, as I didn't expect her words. Since she is really dirty and has already had enough shame, the woman says that she likes to be very direct and reveals to the teacher that she is in love with him, another surprise that he didn't imagine. The next day is the school festival, and Joo Kyung finds herself in deja vu. Go Woon appears with makeup on, however, looking like a clown, like the protagonist the first time she tried. Joo Kyung takes the girl to a place where it's just the two of them before anyone else sees her and helps her fix her face. During the performance, everything goes perfectly well, and the girl shines on stage. After the stage, Go Woon is thanking the protagonist for all her help, and Joo Kyung finds out that Seo Joon is the little girl's brother. The boy is also surprised that the two know each other, and when they are alone, his sister explains that the protagonist helped him deal with some intimidating girls and put on makeup. Meanwhile, Joo Kyung wears a piggy costume to liven up the basketball game together with Su Ah, since Su Jin doesn't know if she will attend. When she is leaving the locker room, the protagonist comes across Su Ho, and as he didn't respond to her messages, she tries to start something with the boy. However, Suho is arrogant and says he won't go to the movies with her anymore, adding that he's only kind because he feels sorry for Joo Kyung. The protagonist didn't expect this and gets extremely upset, so she tells the boy that she never asked him to do anything for her and that from that moment on she can ignore him. After Joo Kyung leaves the locker room, he starts crying, and during the entire game it was like that too. Lucky that with the pig's head, no one could see. Su Jin ends up showing up to watch the basketball game with her friends, and Suho's team wins. The boy still on the court goes to Seo Jun and says that he's right the issue with their friend is all his fault, but he still shouldn't mess with Joo Kyung because of him, because he won't let him. At night, there is a show for the students, and the singer plays a song by Se Yun, which touches Suho's heart, and the boy starts crying a lot. Joo Kyung tries to help him when he finds him, but he leaves running and asks her not to follow him. We see what happened that night. Se Yun called Suho when all that madness with the press started however, the boy didn't answer and decided to go take a shower. When he left, he heard the news and ran to the place. They had a friendship bracelet, and on the stretcher that had a body covered, there was the hand out with the bloody bracelet. At that moment, the boy began to blame himself for not having attended to his friend, and his world has become darker since then. At home, when picking up Suho's coat, which her sister had soiled and is now clean, the protagonist realizes that it was the boy who saved her that day when she wanted to throw herself off the roof of the building. Then everything falls into place, the reason why he was in a bad way and also why he cursed her, saying that her loved ones would blame themselves after she was gone forever if she did that. Joo Kyung goes to the same roof and finds Suho crying there despite the disagreements from earlier, she consoles him. Later, when the boy is calmer, the two talk about the first night they met on the roof and are interrupted when the residents enter the place shouting, warning that the building is on fire. However, when everyone is going downstairs, the two discover that it was smoke that activated the fire alarm, but there is no fire itself. The next day, report cards are delivered to the protagonist's school, and she is worried because her grades were lower than the girl expected. When her mother finds out at the meeting how much her daughter scored in each subject, she becomes angry. However, she ends up making a new client when the wind from her little portable fan lifts the professor's face, and she notices that he doesn't have eyebrows, so the woman gives him her salon card in case one day she wants to get them pigmented. Suho's father is also at school, and this has eased things for now between Joo Kyung and his mother, as the woman is a big fan of the man and has been distracted by him for a long time. When the news that Suho's father is a celebrity spreads and the boy leaves everyone to isolate himself, Su Jin explains that he doesn't like others knowing who his father is. Later in the parking lot, 
Ju Kyung's mother is inconvenienced once again with Su Ho's father while he is talking to his son and bothers him by asking for a photo. Meanwhile, Seo Jun is in the bathroom washing his face, remembering when he met Su Ho's father at Se Yun's funeral. The man seems to have fired the boy after the controversy that took place in the press, which may have led to other reasons why he took his life. We see in the next scene why Su Jin is a little anxious and has the habit of washing her hands every time she is attacked. Her father, after discovering her grades, says if in passing she came second among the better grades, he slaps her in the face and says she won't get into the best medical school like that. The next day, Go Woon invites the protagonist to have a drink after school, where she thanks Ju Kyung for helping her, and despite the other girls continuing to talk about her face, the protagonist asks if she doesn't feel bad about it. However, Go Woon teaches her something indirectly she says that if she agreed with the bad things these girls say, she would be telling herself that she is a loser. So she decided to just ignore them and live with her face the way it is. But anyway, Go Woon asks Ju Kyung to teach her how to use makeup, and the two go to the girl's house. In the place, the protagonist did not expect what was to come. While she was in the room putting makeup on the little girl, Seo Joon appeared wearing headphones, boxer shorts, and a bathrobe, dancing without realizing that there were people in the place. However, as soon as she turned around and saw Ju Kyung, he ran to her room in shame. Upon arriving home, the protagonist is faced with another surprise Su Ho is there to have dinner with her family. It turns out that the girl's mother went to the comic book store to look for her daughter and ended up finding the boy, taking this into account. Considering that he is the son of his idol, he decided to invite him to eat something. When Su Ho goes to help Ju Kyung's brother set the table for dinner, the boy asks if Su Ho likes his sister, and he confesses that he does. However, the boy doesn't believe it and laughs at the situation he just asks that Su Ho not make jokes like that with the protagonist so that she doesn't confuse things. At the dinner table, things go as reasonably as possible. We know that the protagonist's family has a habit of being a little noisy and talking about each person's faults, even in front of visitors. However, when Hee Kyung arrives home, she is drunk again and ends up tripping over a cable that turns off all the lighting in the house. Everyone helps look for the circuit breaker, and the first to find her cell phone to turn on the flashlight and help is Ju Kyung however, when she points the light to where the rest are, she ends up seeing the scene of Su Ho lying on the floor with everyone on top of him. The next day, Hee Kyung invites her sister to go to the sauna with her and eat something delicious afterwards however, when she is inside the furnace, Seo Joon enters together with a classmate from school. She takes the opportunity when they leave because they can't stand the heat and goes to the cafeteria to find her sister, who, when she finds her, almost says her name, so the girl puts a piece of chicken in her mouth to stop her. Afterwards, Ju Kyung stops by an establishment to get hamburgers for the two of them to eat and ends up finding the bullies from her old school there, and as expected, they repeat the same mistakes with the girl. The protagonist runs away when she has the opportunity but ends up leaving her wallet, saying where she studied, behind, and when she goes back to get it, she comes across Su Ho asking them to return the object. The boy ran up to her to give her his belongings, and Ju Kyung says that she doesn't understand why he did that if he isn't even her friend. Su Ho asks her if those girls were the ones who bullied her at her old school, and she confirms. Meanwhile, the protagonist's teacher is getting her eyebrows done at her mother's salon, and as soon as Hee Kyung enters, the man runs out without even having them ready because he feels ashamed of being seen like that. The woman follows him, and in the end, the two end up having their first kiss. The next day, Seo Joon, when accessing social media, discovers that Ju Kyung was also in the sauna like him, but he doesn't remember seeing her. Meanwhile, that group of boys who are always chasing Seo Joon found the photo that was taken in the cafeteria of the boy and the protagonist together, and that was enough for them to use it to get his attention. Seo Joon is in the hospital with his mother, and her exams are good. The medication will be reduced, and the doctor says that this is thanks to an acquaintance of the boy who requested the best team in the place to take care of her. Seo Joon goes to Su Ho to find out why he did this, and the boy says that it's what he would do for his mother if she were in her place too, adding that because the two were friends in the past, that mattered. The conversation is interrupted when Seo Joon receives a call from Ju Kyung's cell phone, but when she answers it, she discovers that it is about those boys telling her that they are with her at a place and want him there. When the protagonist has the opportunity and the rest are distracted, she takes out her cell phone and makes a video call to Su Ah, showing her the environment. The three of them know where it is and run to help her. The first to arrive are Su Ho and Seo Joon, who, upon finding the room where she is, start fighting with the boys. Then the fantastic trio also arrive, and Su Jin is perfect, as she always uses her blows to help put an end to the bullies. In the next scene, we see a baseball player who is the best on his team his name is Hyung Jin. 
The man is focused on the game and hitting pitches when he gets a strike in his heart when he sees a beautiful girl in the stands. The next day at school, the teacher is wondering why Hikyung didn't call him after their kiss. Meanwhile, some kids who are always kept in trouble are in the principal's office being reprimanded because the karaoke owner called the school to report the fight he had on the premises with some of their students. Then the real participants in the fight arrive, and in the middle of the confusion, a delivery man appears to deliver the flowers to the teacher, sent by Hee Kyung. The man gets nervous and sends all the students to the detention room. The professor calls his admirer, and the woman tells him the meaning of the flowers, which is, I will do my best for you. The woman confesses that this is what she intends to do for her beloved. Hee Kyung asks him to think about her every time he looks at the flowers and tells him that she is going on a trip, so she will be away for a while. In the bathroom, Seo Joon talks to Suho and says that he should be grateful for what his former friend did to help his mother, but asks that from that moment on, he stay out of his affairs. Suho approaches the boy and puts his head on his shoulder. When Seo Joon questions what he's doing, Suho just says that she ended up falling asleep while he was talking. When he leaves the bathroom, Seo Joon can't stop thinking about the protagonist he is really falling in love with her. At the bus stop, upon seeing Suho, Joo Kyung remembers when they were coming back after the fight in the taxi, and she was scared thinking about the things that happened when she was alone with those boys, and Suho took her hand. To calm down. Returning to the present day, the protagonist asks if he wants to go to the comic book store with her later however, the boy denies it, and when he is in the car, he tells her to meet him at the cafe the next day to study together, since he paid attention. When the girl and her family were saying she needed to improve her grades. In the cafeteria, while they are studying, Sua invites the protagonist to go to another baseball game with her, and Joo Kyung accepts. It turns out that her friend is in love with a player on the team called Hyung Jin, the same one we saw previously. However, he asks her not to talk to her boyfriend. After studying, that boy who had picked up the protagonist to ask Seo Joon at karaoke appears, and he goes to apologize to the girl. However, before he could complete the sentence, Joo Kyung takes a spray and throws it in his eyes to protect himself. Protect, thinking he would do something else. As soon as the boy comes out near them, he finds Suho and makes sure he sees him. It turns out that he kept pressuring the boy to do this it was at his school, at the internet cafe, and even at the butchers. Su Jin and Joo Kyung decide to drink a little later and eat something together. The protagonist notices that her friend's hands are much drier, and she says it's because of her habit of washing a lot when she's stressed. Su Jin confesses that it's related to her grades, but asks Joo Kyung not to tell anyone, as she's the only one who knows. The next day, the protagonist is confident that she will do well in the test, as she worked hard and studied hard for it. At the baseball game, the girls are surprised when Suho and Taehoon show up. Suha's boyfriend is upset that she lied about being at her grandmother's birthday, but it soon passes. However, the two find it strange that Suho is with him, as she has always dodged the boy's invitations, and he says that the two are now good friends. After the game, Hyung Jin goes to where the girls are and tells Joo Kyung that he has been looking for her since the last time he saw her he fell in love with her, who was in the stands. The boy asks for the protagonist's number, and when Suho realizes that she added him to her contacts, he lectures her, saying that Hyung Jin could be a bad person and that she should be more careful. Suho leaves for a place to de-stress, and Taehoon follows him. The boy says he knows he likes Joo Kyung and gives him some tips on how to tell the girl. Meanwhile, the protagonist ends up having a hasty meeting with the player, thanks to Suha. The next day, the professor remembers the dinner he had with Hee Kyung, and the man told her that he didn't want to date at the moment. He makes an analogy to shoes, saying that he only buys a shoe after analyzing it from all angles. However, as he doesn't want a new one now, he ends up not even going into shoe stores. The protagonist's brother found Go Woon beautiful at the performance, and upon hearing her sing again, he entered the room to pay her a compliment, which came out more like an insult, and the girl left the room. Joo Kyung's grades weren't as good as she expected, and the girl knows that as soon as her mom finds out, she's going to be screwed. Su Jin ended up falling from his position and moving to fourth place. Hyung Jin surprises the protagonist and appears at her school. The boy gives her his lucky baseball and says that this way she will need to appear in the next game so that when Hyung Jin wins, he can ask her out. Seo Joon approaches the two and says that she thought the girl was dating him until then and that taking someone else in front of him is showing that she has no respect for her ex. Hyun Jin runs out after a teacher arrives, and Joo Kyung goes after him. On the way, she stops and listens to Suho's conversation with a girl who declared herself to him however, the boy says he likes someone else at the moment. When she gets home, the protagonist discovers that her mother was so angry about her grades that she threw all of the girl's makeup in the trash. 
Ju Kyung then goes to her mother and starts crying, saying that she really tried hard to improve her grades and that the woman never paid attention to her, which is why she never told her about what happened at her last school and ran outside to retrieve her belongings. Su Ho is in front of the protagonist's house, as he was ready to confess his feelings for her, but when he sees her crying, he decides it's not the best time. The two go to the comic book store, and there the girl vents. Su Ho then puts his hand on her head and says that she was incredible, that he knows how much she studied, and that Ju Kyung's ranking went up by 20. He finds himself proud. Meanwhile, the protagonist's mother wonders at home about what happened to her daughter at her old school, and when her husband suggests that it was because she was a little ugly, the woman doesn't believe that could be the case. The boy takes Ju Kyung home, and there he approaches her very close and gives her a hair clip as a gift, then he says goodbye. We see in the next scene Su Jin with a bruised face her father did this after finding out that she dropped out of the top 10 students. Su Ho is waiting to give the class schedule when Su Jin ends up entering the place, and upon seeing him, she runs out. The boy follows her and asks if it was her father who did this to her again, and Su Jin starts to vent. In the end, her friend hugs her to console her, and when Ju Kyung sees the two of them, she starts to believe that he likes her friend. In the living room, Su Jin apologizes to her friend for some things she said, and he says that if you need anything, just call him. The girl then says that Su Ho should only think of her as a friend however, the boy confirms that she thinks of her as a friend, nothing more. When Ju Kyung enters the classroom and sees Su Jin with the cap, he decides to sit in the back seats instead of the one Su Ho had set aside for her. Meanwhile, He Kyung, upon arriving from a business trip, goes straight to the professor's house and calls him to let him know that he is outside, so the lovebirds go upstairs to have some fun. Seo Jun asks the protagonist for help buying a birthday present for her sister. At the scene, she receives a call from Su Ho asking where she is, and when she hears Seo Jun's voice in the background, it makes her heart melt. Su Ho ends up appearing at the scene, and when he finds Ju Kyung, he starts to pull her out of the elevator however, it turns out that Seo Jun holds her, so the girl is almost crushed by the elevator. In the end, Su Ho enters, and they press the button so much that the elevator breaks down with the three of them inside. Before the event, the protagonist had a huge drink and started to feel like going to the bathroom, as the doors were locked. Su Ho suggested she do it in the cup. But with luck, the doors are soon opened, and she manages to run to the bathroom. Then, when she goes out into the street, it is snowing, and the player appears to be covering her with his umbrella. Ju Kyung thinks the time has come to be honest with the boy and tells him that she likes someone else, so she will return his lucky ball and not go to the game. On the day of the game, Su Ho and Seo Jun show up to watch, and when they hear that if Hyung Jin wins the game, he will be taken to play in the USA, the boys start cheering for the player and celebrate by hugging each other every time. Point he makes. Once it's over, Su Ho checks whether Seo Jun just came to see the game and discovers that her old friend is also liking the protagonist. After this discovery, Su Ho decides that she must confess her love to the protagonist soon, and to do so, she buys a necklace as a gift to give right away. Ju Kyung will go on a trip with her class and Hee Kyung, who takes her with the hope of seeing her beloved. And successfully, the woman spots Jun Woo the two go to hug however, as no one knows about their relationship and Ju Kyung goes back to get his cell phone that he forgot in the car, they are forced to disguise themselves. We now see a little more about the professor's life he tells his crush that he is in a lot of debt at the moment, having taken out a student loan, which is why he didn't want to date anyone at the moment. But our beautiful Hee Kyung doesn't care about that and even gave a gift to her lover he needed new shoes, and that's what she bought for him on the trip. The woman says she will be good to the teacher and asks him to stay with her. Returning to the protagonist, Su Ho invites her to sit next to her on the bus however, Su Jin gets in front of her and sits down. So Seo Jun gets the opportunity to sit next to the girl, and of course he takes advantage. In the tent, the girls comment on what Su Ho had said to that girl, that he liked someone else. Su Ah talks about the possibility of being Su Jin, and the girl neither denies nor affirms. Ju Kyung's colleagues pick on her because she and Seo Jun are wearing matching t-shirts, and everyone comments that they could be a possible couple. And of course, Seo Jun joins the crowd. Whoever manages the place gives information to the kids who want to explore the forest. The man tells a legend that a very ugly woman has lived near the well for years over time, she ended up without a face, and that's why she walks around at night looking for beautiful people to steal your face. Meanwhile, He Kyung works on Seyun's memorial project. In the previous days, she met with Seo Jun because she believes he is the Leo who helped compose the songs however, the boy is unhappy with the company after what they did to your friend and doesn't want to participate in anything she's involved in. 
Later, the woman ends up meeting her boss before going home and comments about thinking it would be a good idea to use Seo Jun in the boy's honor, and that's why she will continue trying to contact him. However, when the man is only with his assistant, she asks him to find a way so that the tribute doesn't happen. Returning to the protagonist, Suho takes her to ride a boat on the lake, and to create a more relaxing atmosphere, he plays a song by Seiyun that has never been released. Later, when Ju Kyung goes to take a photo of the two of them, Suho doesn't feel comfortable with the camera and explains that it's because he's had to deal with his father's paparazzi since he was very young, but how does he know that the girl likes a little selfie? He was willing to take one with her. However, when they are taking the photo, an insect flies into the protagonist's face, and in her desperation to get it out, she ends up falling out of the boat and ending up in the lake. Afterwards, Suho and Ju Kyung get soaked, and so that Su Jin doesn't see her without makeup, the boy distracts her, so the protagonist remains hidden inside the forest and ends up scaring her colleagues because they think it was that woman's spirit from the pit that stole faces. The next day at work Hee Kyung discovered that she was the only one on her team who was transferred to another department, and her colleague asks if she didn't do something to irritate her boss to make this happen however, the woman asserts herself and says that they can't do it. This without prior notice. Meanwhile, the protagonist does not participate in the treasure hunt because she is not feeling well and ends up on the bus to rest. Seo Joon watches the moment she leaves and goes after her to see if the girl is okay. He notices that Ju Kyung has a fever and ends up giving her medicine and staying with her while she sleeps he even gives her an improvised bracelet. Suho realizes that the two are alone on the bus and goes after him to find out what happened. In the end, the two end up fighting as always. In the protagonist's mother's salon, a client is angry, and when she goes to throw a glass of water at the woman, her husband arrives and protects her, then asks the client to leave. And when the woman arrives home at night, she receives a candle at dinner prepared by her husband. The two enjoy a beautiful night. In order not to disturb his parents, Ju Young goes to the comic book store, and there he ends up meeting Go Woon. The boy makes a comment trying to be funny about her following him, but Go Woon doesn't think it's funny at all. Returning to the protagonist, there is a show at the school camp, and Seo Joon is called to sing because he is a student who received K-pop training however, the boy only agrees to go on stage when Ju Kyung promises him to make a wish come true. In the middle of the song, the protagonist comes out to see Soo Jin all happy next to Soo Ho wearing the boy's cap, and Tae Hoon later catches up with her and says that Soo Ho is waiting for the girl to take his coat. Then the boy goes to Soo Ho and says that it is the right time for him to declare himself and that Ju Kyung is waiting for him. However, when she arrives at the place, it's Soo Jin, and Soo Ho doesn't understand. It turns out that on the way the protagonist met her friend and she offered to give her the coat, as the girl thought that Soo Ho liked Soo. Jean just handed it over. Seo Joon ends up finding Ju Kyung to ask her about her desire, and she is crying. The boy tries to calm her down even after knowing that the reason is that Su Ho doesn't like her like she likes him. Su Ho runs out to find the protagonist and catches her with Seo Joon wiping her tears, and then the girl runs away. Her makeup ended up coming off while she was crying, and before she could put the products on her face again, her colleagues reappear, and to hide her ugliness, Su Ho helps her. The two are hiding behind a rock when the boy decides to confess to her, and the couple's first kiss takes place. However, Ju Kyung interrupted him after a while and ran away. The boy follows, and the protagonist can't believe that he really likes her, but when Su Ho gives him the necklace she had bought, Ju Kyung even forgets about his insecurity. So much so that when she sees Su Jin, she runs to hug her, and only when she says her name, because her friend doesn't agree, she realizes that she doesn't have makeup on, but the girl understands why Ju Kyung hides her real face and helps her go to the hidden cabin so no one sees her. When he returns to school, Ju Kyung starts acting in a way that Su Ho hadn't imagined she treats him badly and then sends him cute messages. Later, the two meet behind the trash cans, and the girl is afraid that some bullies will start to bother her because she is dating Su Ho. Despite not liking it, he tries to understand, so the couple reaches an agreement. Before exposing herself to everyone, the protagonist will first tell her friends. Suho invites her to eat at a place an hour away from school, so the two of them can enjoy it alone without Ju Kyung getting worried. While talking at the table, the girl is going to show him that she saved the boy's name as boyfriend with hearts, but backs off when she finds out that he saved hers as Lim Ju Kyung, her name. After starting to eat, the protagonist's colleagues appear at the restaurant, and Suho hides under the table. Ju Kyung explains that he wants to be alone, and the boys, despite wanting to know who is hiding, leave her alone for a while. Suho led the protagonist to that place so that she could meet a makeup artist that the girl is a big fan of. It was with her that Ju Kyung learned how to apply makeup, selling her videos on the internet. 
The protagonist has just received a toast from his idol, and in Selena's bathroom, he corrects the shade of lip tint that Jukyung should use. He even gives a passive-aggressive compliment and says that the girl is better than she was when she started putting on makeup. When he arrives at his mother's salon, Jukyung realizes that he has to start helping around the house after hearing his mother complain that it's not easy to support five people. The protagonist needs to think about the career she wants to pursue to fill out the form she got from school talking about, and when she decides to work in cosmetology, she discovers that it has a very high value for students. Hikyung ends up going into his sister's room once again drunk, and his phone starts ringing. Jukyung answers it and explains that his sister is sleeping. When he asks who it is, the man changes his tone of voice, and the teacher pretends to be someone else. At dawn, the protagonist's father leaves home, and when the family wakes up in the morning, they come across a note that the man left, warning that he will return home when he recovers the money that a man had stolen from him. In fact, it is about this. The investment that the girl's father made in a lost treasure, which of course never existed, when Ju Kyung is sleeping at the stop, Seo Jun approaches, and as soon as she wakes up, the boy can't act normally around her. He felt a little embarrassed after he started to like the protagonist, so in the end he ended up walking. It was just a matter of taking the same bus with the girl. He is no longer using his motorcycle after she talked about the boy's mother she cares a lot about him, etc. At school, the teacher has to deal with a co-worker who invites him out she claims it is to help her buy a gift, and although the man denies it, the woman doesn't listen to him and says she will meet him at night. Meanwhile, those of her colleagues who saw Ju Kyung at the restaurant have already spread the word that she is dating someone mysterious, and Suho asks her to send him a photo that the two of them took together however, when she goes to do that, she ends up sending it to the gossipist boy in class. The girl even manages, with a lot of effort, to erase her cell phone and delete the photo, but isn't that a lot of desperation for something she wanted so much? The two agree to meet at the comic book store, believing it to be the safest place however, Go Woon is working there, and the protagonist quickly takes Suho out. Meanwhile, Hee Kyung is on the street when she sees her lover inside a store with another woman. She gets blood in her eyes and goes to the place to see what is happening. Hee Kyung makes a point of making it clear that she is dating the teacher, and when she does, he gets up and leaves. The next day at school, Ju Kyung takes a nap under her class until class starts, and when Soo Jin goes to straighten her hair, she notices that her friend is wearing the necklace that Soo Ho carried at camp. Then the girl goes to the bathroom and starts washing her hands frantically. The protagonist spends the day trying to get a job so she can pay for her course and help her mother however, no matter how many places she goes, it's not easy to do so. The girl calls Soo Ho to vent, but her boyfriend has his phone turned off at the moment, and when the protagonist goes to the bathroom, she ends up coming across Seo Jun there. He is working as a model, and his photographer invites Ju Kyung to participate. Since the other model was absent and the girl accepted, it's more money than she was expecting. It turns out that the photos were taken as if they were a couple. How will Soo Ho react when he sees this? Meanwhile, our boy is having dinner with his father and Soo Jin's parents, and the girl is also along. At one point, her father is unpleasant, as expected, and Soo Ho saves her by saying that they need to go out to study. Later, Ju Kyung is at an establishment with Seo Jun to eat something after the section. She asks how he would save his girlfriend's name on his cell phone, and the boy replies that it would be something cute and heartfelt. He thinks it's strange that Su Ho doesn't show it to others, and the girl explains why. As she is heading home, Su Ho calls her, and the two are talking when suddenly the boy hangs up. It turns out that he found the protagonist's father on the street the man seems to be starving and smelly, so Su Ho took him to her house, gave him food, a bath, and a bed to sleep in. Meanwhile, Ju Kyung is cleaning the house to help his mother and sings the song that Go Woon sang solo in the performance. His brother at that moment is crazy and starts to see the girl, so he asks his sister not to sing this song. Later, in the middle of the night, Su Ho wakes up with the girl's father on his couch. He is watching a game, and the boy is also a fan of the player, so the two watch the game together. The next day, the man says goodbye to the boy before he goes to school, tells him to take care of himself, thanks him for his stay, and receives the warning that Suho will only keep her secret until that day. Meanwhile, at school, the protagonist's brother is very deluded and comes to Go Woon, saying that she insists on appearing in his head, and that's why the boy will give her a chance. I don't know where he thought this would work, and of course the girl just ignores him. Seo Jun got Ju Kyung a job at a cafe, and when she is thanking him, Suho becomes jealous, so he takes her away from the boy. The protagonist even realized it on her first day and, in the end, ended up with her hand a little burned, but through no fault of her own. When Seo Jun found out about this, he was worried about running to the place, but the girl had already left. 
When the boy is leaving the cafe, he bumps into some girls and drops his friendship bracelet that he had with Seiyun and Suho. One of the girls takes the accessory and puts it away. At night, Ju Kyung becomes irritated when she discovers that her brother is taking private lessons, considering the family's financial situation. Then she fights with her mother and says that she's the only one who cares about this then the protagonist leaves and calls Suho to vent. The boy invites her to come to where he is, and he teaches her martial arts. His lover proposes a challenge, and if the girl succeeds, he will grant her a wish. Ju Kyung manages to comply, and Suho asks if she wants him to pay for her makeup classes. The protagonist cannot accept this and makes a very simple request to change the contact on her cell phone to girlfriend with hearts. Meanwhile, Su Jin called Suho, and he didn't answer, so she decided to go to where she thought he would be and came across the two of them together. The girl doesn't have a very good expression and doesn't even greet them. As the couple ended up getting wet, Suho took his girlfriend to her house so she could take a shower and dry her clothes. Then he orders a pizza for the two of them to eat while watching a movie. While they are in the music room, where the three friends were making music, we see that the protagonist's father is still there. It turns out that he found an expensive drink and ended up drinking it all, so he fell asleep on the spot. So to avoid being seen, the man hides under the table in the room. The couple starts watching a horror film, and our little friend gets several scares. At a certain point, when the two are leaning in to kiss on the sofa, the man realizes that it is his daughter who is with Suho and comes out from under the furious table. However, as they were already scared of the film, the girl grabbed something to hit the man and knocked out her father. The two then leave and make an agreement not to tell Ju Kyung's mother that he slept at the boy's house or that she is dating him. Before going to sleep, Su Ho calls his girlfriend, and the two are in love, with the story of not being able to hang up the call. The next day, the protagonist decided that it was time to tell her friends and others about dating Suho however, when she was about to do so, she was surprised by Su Jin, as she said she liked the boy and was thinking about declaring herself to him. Ju Kyung doesn't feel good about the story, and when she realizes that Su Jin is going with the two of them to the study group, she backs off and says she isn't feeling well. Later, Suho asks her to go to the comic book store and instead gives her several medicines. He didn't know what his loved one had, so he took everything he could. Meanwhile, the teacher and Hee Kyung make up, and the man explains that she has been acting strange and drinking too much he wants to know what is going wrong at work or something, so the two agree to tell each other everything. Other. The next day, Ju Young goes to the comic book store to find out why Go Woon is rejecting him and receives a list of his flaws. Seo Joon appears at the place too he went to bring his little sister something to eat, and Ju Young starts to think that the two are boyfriends. And Su Jin invites the protagonist to accompany her to a store. The girl wants to buy a gift for Suho because he was safe at dinner with her family, and she reveals that she will ask him out soon. Even though Su Jin was acting that way, she also bought a little gift for Ju Kyung. Then the two say goodbye, and the protagonist goes to work. When she arrives, Seo Jun is on site in uniform and explains that he is filling in for an employee. Meanwhile, Suho went to visit Ju Kyung's father and gave him a gift, thinking about improving his relationship with his father-in-law. Returning to the protagonist, Seo Joon takes the same bus as the girl, claiming that he is going to pick up his sister from the comic book store, but we know that she is at home, but Ju Kyung is not. Having spent the day strangely, Seo Joon asks what happened, and the girl gives a hypothetical situation like hers and Su Jin. The boy says that this hypothetical person should stay with friendship instead of love, because if the man in the middle is deceiving both, he must not be worth it. But he adds that the protagonist doesn't need to worry, as Suho isn't a heartbreaker. When the two say goodbye and Ju Kyung is going home, her mother appears and invites Seo Joon to come along of course the boy accepts, and when they get home, the protagonist has a surprise Suho is also there on site. Ju Kyung's boyfriend is jealous, but she also lied that she was doing something with the family. The boys are making dumplings when a family vote begins on who should date the protagonist, and Suho wins all the votes after appealing to set up a fan meeting between Ju Kyung's mother and her father. However, when a competition begins, the woman says that whoever makes the best cupcakes will win, and they both work hard. In the end, it is Seo Joon who wins. Then the protagonist goes up to her room and Suho appears in it. The boy wants to know what she and Seo Joon were doing together. Ju Kyung tells the truth they were just working, so her boyfriend just asks that next time. She doesn't lie. The two get along well, and when Suho goes to see the photos of when his beloved was little, he realizes that Ju Kyung is the same little girl he liked when he went to the comic book store. So the boy takes the photo for himself, and when the protagonist tries to get it back, the couple ends up falling into bed, at which point her father enters and kicks her out of the room. 
Seo Joon goes up to get the table with Suho and wants to know why the two are fighting. Suho says they aren't, and anyway, it's none of his business, so Seo Joon explains that every time Joo Kyung asks him for romantic advice, he wants to take the girl away from Suho and take her for himself. Of course, the two do what they always do they start fighting, and as they are at the house of the protagonist's furious mother, she makes one cut the other's toenail and say I love you, then each one leaves with a smile. The next day, when the girl arrives at school, the whole class is excited they made t-shirts and even printed her and Seo Joon's rehearsal photos, so everyone thinks they are dating. The protagonist tries to deny the story however, Seo Joon doesn't help her, and the boy doesn't say anything to deny or confirm. Later, when Joo Kyung is with her friends, Su Jin says that she will have plans with Suho that night, and the protagonist is surprised that she didn't know anything. Then she receives a message from the boy asking her to go to the roof. At the place, the two face a difficult conversation. Suho asks her about the photos that she hadn't told him about however, the girl was going to do it the day he hung up the call because he had found her father. And Joo Kyung says that he also doesn't talk every time he meets someone, so Suho starts with the talk that women and men can't be friends because eventually one of them will start to have feelings for the other. The protagonist comments about Su Jin and them being old friends, but the boy doesn't understand why she's mentioning her, and Joo Kyung knows that it's not right that this rule he's imposing applies only to her, so the girl decides to leave the place. The protagonist's brother, when he meets Seo Joon, says that he can punch him, and the boy doesn't understand anything that is happening, especially when Joo Young talks about stealing someone from Seo Joon. Before he can clarify, he receives a call and turns your attention to that. It was Hee Kyung calling him she wanted to know if he released the song that was composed by the boy and Seyun to be re-recorded, and she discovered that the boy doesn't know anything. So the woman goes to her boss's right-hand man and questions him about what's going on, as it seems like he's doing everything he can to prevent the tribute to Seyun from happening and is crossing the line without getting permission to record the song. The man just tells her that he wants to keep his job, to keep quiet, and to keep to herself. Meanwhile, Suho welcomes Su Jin to her house unexpectedly since he didn't invite her. So much so that when she heads to the sofa, the boy asks her if she's going to leave, and Su Jin ends up asking for some water. Suho goes to get the drink, and the girl takes the opportunity to take a photo of the painting on top of his bed to post on her social networks. At that moment, her friend's cell phone starts ringing it's the protagonist calling. Su Jin decides to answer and makes Joo Kyung quickly hang up. Then the girl hands over the gift she had bought for Suho, and he doesn't understand as they've never exchanged gifts, it doesn't even make sense for her to be there at that time of night, and she says that she won't accept it, adding that he has a girlfriend and that Su Jin should leave. The protagonist saw the photo that her friend posted, if we can call her a friend, right, and when her boyfriend calls her, she tells them to talk the next day and hangs up. Hee Kyung begins an investigation on her own and discovers something from a reporter about Suho's father, his boss. At Joo Kyung's work, Suho complains that Seo Joon was also working there the other day and says that she will wait for her to come out so they can talk. So Seo Joon decides to intervene and asks him not to be so obsessive, and then the boy leaves the establishment. Seo Joon tells the protagonist and they are alone that she should go after her lover, and the boy says he can hold his coffee for a moment. As soon as he leaves, the bullies from his old school come in and talk to Seo Joon, they were the ones who found the boy's friendship bracelet and returned it to him, and then they questioned him about whether it was Joo Kyung and Seo Joon who had left. He questions why they want to know, but receives no answer. Meanwhile, the protagonist is talking to her boyfriend and says that she feels uncomfortable telling her friends that they are dating, so he asks her why, because with the rumors they invented about her and Seo Joon, she was calm. He asks Joo Kyung to stop working if the boy stays at the cafe, as he doesn't like her talking or being with Seo Joon. From that moment on, the two start to really fight. The protagonist says that he can't stop him from seeing his friends because, would he do what he's asking? So Su Ho says yes. But she knows that this decision has to come from him, and Joo Kyung can't impose it. The protagonist then says that if she refuses to work or have friends, maybe they won't be able to date anymore. They both end up suffering from this conversation in the end. The next day, at the bus stop, Suho hears Seyun's song coming from a cell phone and girls commenting however, it wasn't him singing, so the boy decides to run to his father's company. The same thing happened to Seo Joon, who was taking photos when he heard the song on the radio and ran to the company too. Meanwhile, at the scene, Hee Kyung decides to put her job at risk and go after her boss. The woman says that she understands that the man doesn't want Seyun's name to become a problem again, but she couldn't steal the boy's song to cover up his mistake, and then shows a photo of her boss with a woman, whom she got from the reporter. 
Hee Kyung says he can't believe he made the woman publish a story about Se Yun being a bully to prevent his scandal with the actress from leaking and thus ended up being part of the blame for a young man taking his own life. The woman adds that he better take care of this rather than see her reporting him, and when the woman leaves the room, she comes across Su Ho at the door, who ends up listening to everything. The boy is devastated when he discovers the truth and runs away. Seo Jun finds him and wants to start a fight, charging his father's company for what he did however, Su Ho doesn't want to know anything else, and when will he cross the street without looking around? Seo Jun goes along, and they end up being run over. At night, Ju Kyung tries to call her boyfriend, but his cell phone is turned off. So the protagonist decides to end this anguish she has been feeling and goes to Su Jin's house to tell her friend the truth. Su Jin says that it's not okay because it's uncomfortable for her, but the girl explains that she's had these feelings for Su Ho other times, and they didn't last long. Su Jin still hugs her friend and tries to comfort her by saying that she didn't do anything wrong. At home, Ju Kyung tries to call her boyfriend again, but her phone is still off. She starts to think that the boy is very upset. Afterwards, the girl decides to go to the courtyard of her house to refresh her mind a little and ends up finding her sister doing the same. Hee Kyung asks if the protagonist is Suho's friend and tells her about the accident. In the next scene, we see Suho's father with his right-hand man. The man asks his employee to explain what Hee Kyung was talking about. And his employee says that he asked the journalist to do that story about Se Yun so that she could cover the scandal with the actress. Suho's father is furious, even more so after realizing that, in addition to being guilty of what the boy did to himself, the company also stole his music. Meanwhile, Ju Kyung arrived at the boy's hospital room, went to the bed where one was sleeping, and started crying. Suddenly, Suho enters the room in a wheelchair without understanding why she is saying her name and crying on Seo Jun's bed. When the protagonist realizes that her beloved is better than she thought, she is relieved. But the two need to disguise themselves, as Ju Kyung is without makeup, so Suho tells Seo Jun that the girl is his cousin. The boy did not answer the protagonist's calls, as her cell phone ended up being damaged in the accident. When the two are alone, they make peace, and those endless fights seem like they will calm down now. Later, Seo Jun tells Suho that the boy's father thinks he is Leo, but he is actually Suho. The boy doesn't understand how the man didn't suspect and his son made a room at home with several instruments and devices to compose music. The next day, Su Jin seems to be normal in relation to Ju Kyung, and the two end up using the gift that the protagonist's friend had bought for them. Ju Kyung ends up letting slip that Su Ho is in the hospital, and Su Jin seems like a different person at the moment. Her friend asks why she didn't tell him about it before and then says that she will hand over her activity to a teacher. Su Ho's father visits him a few times in the hospital, but the boy always tells him that he doesn't want him there and asks him to leave. If their relationship was already complicated before, it has now multiplied. Returning to Su Jin, a girl from Ju Kyung's old school is transferred to the one she studies now. This is the girl that the protagonist believed was her friend however, she never helped her in relation to the bullies, so on the contrary, sometimes I even filmed what the girls did. Su Jin ends up becoming interested in the girl. In the room of our injured little angels, we see that Su Ho has always taken care of those she cares about, and Seo Jun's mother let it slip that the boy visited her when she was hospitalized. Later, when the woman is no longer in the room with the two of them, Seo Jun really needs to go to the bathroom, and Su Ho helps him with that, certainly something that no one else could know. Meanwhile, the bullies from the protagonist's old school are at the gate of the girl's new school looking for Seo Jun. When they see Hai Min, they start to bother her. It seems that the girl reported them to her old school and was transferred by that. The bullies then say that they will leave her alone if the girl finds out if Ju Kyung is dating Seo Jun. Su Jin goes to visit Su Ho and says that his father called her, asking her to be the boy's caretaker, so Su Jin took several things for him. Seo Jun asks the girl why she came alone, since she and Ju Kyung are best friends and do everything together. When Su Jin asks if the boy was waiting for her, Seo Jun says she should ask Su Ho. As soon as the girl leaves the room, she goes to the bathroom and starts washing her hands frantically. In the next scene, we see Hee Kyung on a date with the teacher at the coffee shop where the protagonist works. The two are unable to enjoy the date much because, when they discover that the girl works there, they hide. The man is afraid that Ju Kyung will change the way he sees him after discovering that he is dating his sister or that the teachers will start to think he favors her at school. And Hee Kyung is surprised to see her little sister dedicating herself to this, but she doesn't understand why, so Jun Woon suggests that it must be to pay for the makeup course that Ju Kyung had planned to take to work in the field. Your loved one is surprised, as she didn't know any of this, but at the same time, she admires her little sister for making an effort. 
Meanwhile, the protagonist's mother asks Ju Young to take some food to the hospital that the woman prepared for Suho. The protagonist also goes to the hospital, and when she arrives at the boy's room, she catches them both in a bed. It turns out that Suho was trying to help Seo Jun get dressed. The girl took some comics so that Suho would have something to do to pass the time, and when she goes to collect one that fell on the floor, she ends up getting her hair tangled in the boy's clothes. At that moment, the protagonist's younger brother enters and says he won't disturb the couple's intimate moment. Then, the boys in their class approach, and as she still has her hair tied up, she hides under Suho's covers so that no one sees her. And when Ju Young is leaving, she ends up meeting Go Woon. The boy bothers her again, saying that he can only think about her, and so on. As soon as Seo Jun arrives, Ju Young discovers that the girl is not his girlfriend but rather his sister, Go Woon also finds out that Ju Kyung is the sister of her admirer. When Seo Jun manages to get rid of the boys, Ju Kyung decides to leave, but first signs Seo Jun's contract. At the protagonist's mother's salon, the professor went to touch up her eyebrows, and one of the woman's clients started talking about her single daughter when she discovered that the man was two. However, Jun Woo says he's not interested, and as soon as he leaves, Hee Kyung runs after him. The two go to a dark street, and when they start to get closer to kiss, Ju Young catches them, and his sister tries to distract the boy so he doesn't recognize the teacher. And the parents of this busy family fight once again because the man took a very expensive taxi ride he was going after that treasure boy, and in the end, it didn't do any good since he couldn't catch up with him. The next day, Hee Kyung tells her sister that she could pay for her makeup lessons so she wouldn't have to work, and she is proud to hear that she wants to try it herself. The teacher's co-worker saw the sisters talking and then went to the teacher, saying that she knows that his girlfriend is the sister of a student, who started to believe that the man favors the girl because of this. Meanwhile, the hurt boys are making up and helping each other. At school, Sua decided to participate in an online beauty contest and decided to register Ju Kyung as well. At that moment, Haimin takes photos of the protagonist from afar, and Su Jin catches her doing so. When he asks her why, the girl makes an excuse and leaves. Later, when Ju Kyung goes to the hospital, Su Ho and her father are fighting in the room, so the girl and Seo Jun wait outside. The two end up listening to everything and learn that the biggest blame for all the things that happened lies with the boy's father. Su Ho vented to the man, saying that he blamed himself all this time for what Se Yun did to himself, when in fact he should have blamed him for it. He says that he never expected much from his father since on the night his mother passed away, he was in bed with another mother. And the conversation is interrupted as Suho starts to have a panic attack. After his friend is medicated, Seo Jun is alone with his father and tells the man that Leo is actually his son and that if the man had been interested in him, he would have discovered it by just going to Suho's house. Later, Seo Jun helps his friend get some air outside the room and asks him why he never told him that he had never met Se Yun. The boy thought that their friend had taken his life for Su. Ho I didn't believe him, but that didn't even happen. Then Su Ho explains that even if she had told Seo Jun, it wouldn't bring Se Yun back to life. The next day, Su Ho's father made a statement. The man announced that the new song released was plagiarized and that he would leave his position as owner of the company. Su Jin, upon reading about it, dropped the private class she was taking and went to the hospital after Su Ho. At the place, the girl came across him and Ju Kyung kissing. When Su Jin returns home, her father slaps her in the face for leaving in the middle of class, and the girl doesn't say anything to him she just goes to her room and locks herself inside. Su Ho was discharged from the hospital, and in the music room, he ended up finding something that had been there for some time a letter that Se Yun had hidden, written to Seo Jun and Su Ho, thanking them for their friendship and saying that he never felt more alone after he met them. Su Ho showed the letter to Seo Jun when the two went to visit their friend's grave together. Even though the letter reminds the boys of the grief of Se Yun's departure, they still have a little fun. Seo Jun, as always, was hot-tempered with some guys who were passing by in the car after one of them threw a cigarette at him. So the two had to escape Seo Jun even took Su Ho on his back to help him, but as none of them are 100% recovered, they ended up falling in a place where there was some manure and fertilizer, resulting in a smell. Too bad. The protagonist signed up for the makeup course she wanted so much. At Su Ho's house, when they are both taking a shower, Seo Jun comments that he thinks Ju Kyung doesn't want to say that the two are dating because of Su Jin, despite having an idea of what the boy is doing. Speaking, the conversation is interrupted when the protagonist calls Su Ho. The next day, the boy goes to his girlfriend's house to accompany her on the bus and to school. On the way, he comments that they can tell her about the relationship when she is comfortable. Su Ho confesses that he was acting that way because he felt jealousy, but now it's gone. At school, 
Su Jin seems to be doing some things on purpose to bother our protagonist, like taking the transfer girl with her to greet Ju Kyung. But it seems that the protagonist doesn't see this side of her friend and receives another surprise when she arrives in the classroom. The competition that Sua entered her in has Ju Kyung in second place and Sami in first. This makes the girl's heart start to race, and she asks Sua to get her out of this, but now that it's all posted and there's no way to delete it, Ju Kyung fears that the end of the lie about her face being beautiful is next. Later, Su Jin goes to Suho and asks if they can talk in a more private place after class. The boy says that he will have commitments with his girlfriend and adds that he is Ju Kyung, but asks her not to tell the others yet because they are waiting for the right moment. Su Jin then asks him why he told her, and Suho replies that it's because they are friends. At lunch, dear Su Jin attacks again. She saved seats for her friends to sit with her, and when the protagonist notices, Hai Min is also at the table. Su Jin comments on the name of the school the girl previously attended, and they ask if it wasn't the same as Ju Kyung's of course, the protagonist denies it. Then Hai Min asks if Ju Kyung really isn't the same as her old school, as she is very similar to the girl from there, and this makes the protagonist leave the table. In the bathroom, Su Jin asks Hai Min if she was stupid or was acting out because she didn't see that the protagonist and Ju Kyung from her old school are the same people. At night, at the comic book store, the protagonist gives Su Ho several gifts that she managed to buy with her salary. And Go Woon ended up finding the cast he already took off his arm in Seo Joon's closet the boy didn't put it away because of the signature Ju Kyung made. When Su Ho gets home, he puts away the gifts he received from his girlfriend and starts using one of them, which was a knitting kit, to de-stress. The next day, when she arrives at school, the protagonist discovers that she won that competition on social media, and the institution needs a new face for its advertisements, so to take advantage of Ju Kyung's victory, they invite her to do so. In the next scene, we see Ju Young getting dumped by Go Woon. The girl comments that he is like a fly to her that keeps bothering her at bedtime. And just as the protagonist is leaving school, the bullies from her old institution appear. They ask if the girl knows them and about Seo Joon, but they change their target when they see Hai Min. Ju Kyung decides to go to the girl and help her get out of there, claiming that they both need to do school work. And Su Jin gets Sami's cell phone number when the protagonist is no longer around. Hai Min tells Ju Kyung when they are alone that she looks very beautiful with makeup and says that she won't tell anyone about her secret. When the girl realizes that the protagonist hasn't forgiven her because she never helped her, Hyman explains that she was afraid they would do to her what they did to Ju Kyung. Meanwhile, to be sure, Su Ho asks Seo Jun what he meant about Su Jin and the protagonist that day, and the boy tries to explain what he thinks it is, then helps Su Ho knit the correct form. Later, Su Ho meets with Ju Kyung and asks her if she's feeling okay. The girl ends up opening up about being scared that Hyman will tell everyone the truth about her face. In the next scene, we see Su Jin taking photos of Seo Jun after receiving a message from Sami. When she opens the conversation with the girl, we see that if Su Jin sent the boy's photos to her, Sami would send others back to him, only from Ju Kyung, like he used to be. This awakens a doubt in Sami, and soon the girl realizes that the Ju Kyungs are the same person. And Su Jin ends up picking up the protagonist's necklace when she drops it without the girl knowing, and when she sees her looking for it, she doesn't say anything about it. Suho decides to look in a different place than where his girlfriend is so that she doesn't have to stay until night due to this, despite the boy telling her to forget the object and that everything was fine. Su Jin approaches him and shows that she has the necklace, then throws it into the fire and reveals that she likes Suho, so the boy asks if she and Ju Kyung aren't best friends, and the girl replies that they will continue in case he doesn't like the protagonist. Su Jin is willing to discard Ju Kyung if Suho insists on being with her. And she says more things, saying that she has been by his side for 10 years and that if she had confessed first, the boy would have chosen her. However, Suho denies it and says that it wouldn't make a difference, as he doesn't like her like that, and even with that response, Su Jin tries to pull him in for a kiss, but our beautiful Suho doesn't let her and moves away. He buys another necklace for his loved one but doesn't tell her about it he just says he'll help her look for it around the school and leaves it in a corner for her to find. Seo Jun also went to the place because he was worried that the protagonist would be alone at night and still looking for the accessory, but when he sees the two of them together, he leaves. The janitor who takes care of the school almost catches Su Ho and Ju Kyung. To hide, the two run to a room, and there they come across Hee Kyung and the teacher. Afterwards, the four of them go to dinner. The sisters wanted to know what each one was doing there, and the truths were put on the table. Meanwhile, Su Jin meets the bullies from the protagonist's old school again and the girls go to Ju Kyung's house. On the way, they pass Seo Joon, and he realizes that something is going on, so he doesn't let them move on. 
Sami shows him a photo of the protagonist in her old school, but the boy doesn't care about her appearance and breaks Sami's cell phone. Seo Jun says he can't control his anger when faced with bullies because it reminds him of what happened to his best friend and that if he catches her bullying Ju Kyung or anyone else, there will be consequences. The next day at school, everyone is talking about the protagonist when she passes by, and the girl doesn't understand what's happening until she gets to class. Sua approaches her, disappointed, and asks her if the person in the photos was really her. Someone made an article about Ju Kyung and exposed her old face. This triggers several feelings in the protagonist, who runs away crying she even falls on the way, and Suho still doesn't know what's happening. He tries to help her, but Ju Kyung won't let her. All the friends she had made and who brought joy to her life seemed to have turned against the protagonist. As she ran to leave the school, the school's bullies caught her and took her to the bathroom. Several students gathered at the door to see what was happening. The girls wanted to take off Ju Kyung's makeup to reveal her real face however, Suho entered the bathroom and held the hand of the group leader, who was mistreating his beloved. Then, the protagonist runs away, and her boyfriend goes after her. On the way, Seo Jun tries to hold Ju Kyung to find out what is happening, but the girl breaks free and continues crying and running. But soon the boy finds out what this is about and goes to Sami's school to ask her to remove the things she posted on the forum. Instead, Seo Jun is surprised to learn that it wasn't her but someone from the institution itself, as they would have to have access to the forum to do so. Meanwhile, even the protagonist's brother starts fighting to defend his sister and starts fighting with a boy who is talking badly about her. Go Woon is the one who catches him and takes him out of the fight she was also upset with what happened. But says that violence at this moment will not be the best for anyone. Suho looks for his loved one in all the places he imagined she would be, but he doesn't find her anywhere. He starts to think the worst, and this despairs him. After making sure the protagonist is not at home, the girl's mother enters her room to leave a package and ends up finding out about the makeup course she has started taking. At school, when Seo Jun arrived in the classroom, he went straight to Su Jin and told her to come with him, or he would say in front of everyone what she did. When they are alone, the boy asks her to delete the video and says that she may have thought she destroyed Ju Kyung by doing that, but she only destroyed herself. When Suho finds out, he won't even want her friendship anymore. However, Su Jin refuses to delete the post. Suho continues until late at night looking for his beloved, and when she has nowhere else to go, the protagonist returns home. He finds her entering the gate, but before she can say or do anything, the girl enters. When she enters the house, Ju Kyung's mother is furious that she found out about the course alone and starts fighting with her daughter. She wants the girl to ask for a refund for the course and says that she won't let her do it, then she tears up the registration card. The protagonist says that she is working to pay for it, and when she realizes that everything could be over, she simply explodes. We have to take into consideration what she went through that day. Even her brother, who is a pain in the ass, sometimes feels sorry for what his sister is going through and tries to console her, but she locks herself in her room. Meanwhile, the teacher decides to end his relationship with Hee Kyung because he thinks that his lover's sister didn't go to school because she was too affected by the discovery that the two are together. The next day, Suho's father's right-hand man goes to Suho's house to apologize for what he did and explain that the boy's father really didn't know anything, but that he took responsibility so that his son wouldn't hate him. More. Afterwards, Suho goes to the protagonist's house, and her brother tells her that she will probably miss another day of school, as she has been locked in her room since she arrived the night before. At school, the boy and Seo Jun need to tear down the posters that have Ju Kyung's face on them they were the photos she had taken to promote the school, but after everything that happened, the students started doodling on them, and the only way is to rip them off. In the classroom, the teacher scolds his students when one asks if they will change the face of the school now, since the protagonist is not that pretty. The man says that everyone knows how she must be feeling right now, until the girl doesn't show up to class again and is disappointed that no one is worried about her. And Suho, throughout the day, kept sending messages to his loved one, hoping that she would give him a sign that she was okay. Seo Jun finally managed to find out who posted that about the protagonist, and when he arrives at the girl's room to intimidate her and tell her to delete the video, he finds Go Woon already doing so. Later, Ju Young goes to take a bag to his sister that Su Ho asked him to deliver and begins to despair when he thinks that she might be doing something to hurt herself, which is why she is locked and very quiet in her room. However, she just wasn't in the room. The youngest tells how Su Ho is worried about the protagonist and asks her to at least answer his calls. Meanwhile, Ju Kyung's teacher called her mother at school to tell her about what was posted on the student forum. When the woman finds out, she starts to feel bad about the way she has been treating her daughter, not realizing it before. That there was something wrong going on. 
the protagonist decides to leave the house and goes to Su Jin's house to ask if she was the one who posted those things, and what she feared most is true the girl couldn't bear to see the couple together and thought it would make Juk Young leave school, so Su Jin would have everything back to normal. Su Ho, to calm his anxiety, tidies up the comic book store, and on a wall that is made for those who frequent the store to write, he leaves a message underneath something that the protagonist had written when they were little. The store owner is playing cards and asks the boy to draw one to see if anything comes out about the couple however, the card that Suho draws is about separation. When Ju Kyung arrives home, her mother hugs her and starts crying, so Hee Kyung tells her that their mother went to the protagonist's school and discovered the things that happened to her at the old institution. Later, when it's just the protagonist's father and mother alone, the woman confesses that it's her fault for always destroying her daughter's self-esteem, which is why the girl was afraid to tell her things. Now she understands why Ju Kyung was so upset when the woman put makeup on her and why her daughter uses so much plaster. And Hee Kyung tries to give advice to her sister, to ignore what others say, that if she is confident, no one will touch her. The next day, the protagonist's mother takes her to a doctor to see what cosmetic procedures she can do to feel more comfortable with her appearance. However, at the scene, the man begins to want to change the girl's entire face to make her look like she does with makeup. So her mother takes her out, and in the car, the woman says that if her daughter wants, she can transfer to another school that no one will know about and start all over again. At night, Ju Kyung goes to the comic book store, and Su Ho ends up going too. When he finds her, he tries to do everything he can to cheer her up. With the same dances she did for him when they were little, but the protagonist doesn't recognize them. Then, Su Ho takes his beloved to a place with a beautiful view and says that now she no longer needs to run away, as he will always be by her side. And she adds that Ju Kyung is stronger than she thinks, even stronger than him. Meanwhile, the teacher is close to where Hee Kyung works and ends up seeing a boy asking her out the woman knows he is there, despite being hidden. She agrees to go out with the boy and when he asks her if she is dating, the woman says she is single. Su Ho accompanies the protagonist home, and when she arrives in her room, she goes to take out her cell phone to send him a message, at which point she comes across a very cute video of the boy doing a little dance to make her laugh. Later, Su Ho decides to follow his girlfriend's advice and talk to his father, at which point he comes across the message he left warning that she would leave the country for a while. So the boy goes to the man's house however, he is already at the airport, and the two agree to go to a great restaurant when he returns to Korea. The next day, the protagonist decided to go to school with her real face and face her fear and the people who had something to say about her. While he was inside a stall in the bathroom, he heard the bullies talking about his face and Suho, so Ju Kyung decided that he was tired of hiding and went after them. The girl put each one in their place, and then, to finish, Suho kissed her forehead to confirm that they were together. And the teacher keeps thinking throughout the day about the image of Hee Kyung with the guy she went out with the night before the man is full of jealousy. Hee Kyung is with his parents in the car and stopped near the school. The youngest is on alert to warn if someone is going to intimidate the protagonist so that they can act. When the teacher passes by the car, he thinks there is only Hee Kyung inside and starts throwing leaves at the vehicle, shouting for her to get out of there. He only realizes that she wasn't alone when the woman's parents come out to see what was happening. So the man apologizes and runs away. As soon as the teacher arrives to teach and notices that Ju Kyung is present, he gets emotional and says that he was so worried about her, then he has to leave the classroom because he was crying. Later, Su Jin goes to the bathroom when the protagonist is alone and says that she can't believe she had the courage to go to school without makeup, adding that the girl must be trying to put on a little show to get attention and that everyone could fall, but she does not. Ju Kyung really doesn't understand what Su Jin is up to, and to her surprise, at that moment, Sua enters the bathroom to defend the protagonist. The girl knows that she was the one who posted the video and photos she says that Su Jin should be kneeling down and apologizing to Ju Kyung. At first, Sua even tried to understand why her friend acted that way, but then since the protagonist didn't want to leave the house anymore and no one had heard from her, she thought Su Jin would regret it. Su Jin says that she's always been a horrible person and doesn't regret the things she's done. So Sua runs away, and Ju Kyung follows. The protagonist explains the reasons for keeping the secrets, and soon the two make peace. Su Ho ends up meeting Su Jin, and he tells her to apologize to Ju Kyung and get it over with. He knows that the girl doesn't like what she's doing and that she's never been like that. However, the girl continues on her way. Meanwhile, Ju Young throws herself on the ground and tells Go Woon that if she doesn't feel anything for him, she should step on the boy, and that's what she does. In the next scene, Seo Jun is thinking about what Su Jin told him one day about him liking Ju Kyung and not acting. The boy ends up getting angry and kicking a can, which hits Ju Young. 
The protagonist's brother starts crying and venting to Seo Joon, saying that now he can move on but that he doesn't understand why Go Woon doesn't give him a chance. After class, Sua and Joo Kyung go out together, and at one point, they end up coming across the bullies from the protagonist's old school bothering Hai Min. So the protagonist decides to help the girl, which results in the three of them fighting with the other three bullies. Suddenly, a classmate of the girls arrives and says that they can go, that he will deal with the situation from that moment on, and that way the bullies won't bother them anymore. Hyman started to be friends with Sua and Joo Kyung the three became a loyal trio. Meanwhile, Su Ho is worried that his girlfriend hasn't given him any news yet, and his friends say that he can't be too clingy if he is, Joo Kyung will run out in the first week of dating. The next day, when she is helping her mother at the salon, the protagonist receives a gift from the woman a beautiful pink suitcase, which she can use to carry her makeup and brushes. Her mother wants her to quit work and dedicate herself to the profession she chose she supports her daughter and believes that she will be greater than Selena, the girl's idol. At night, Hee Kyung is called to pick up the teacher from an establishment. The man has gotten so drunk that he is sleeping at the table. And the woman's parents are at the market when they come across that man who deceived them about the treasure. They run after the guy, and the one who stops him is Hee Kyung, who saw the whole chase and stopped him. However, her parents ended up discovering that their daughter and the teacher had a relationship. In the next scene, we see Seo Joon going to see Su Ho at the Martial Arts Academy. The two make a bet, and whoever wins has to grant the other a wish. Since it was Su Ho who won, Seo Joon had to perform in a public place, singing a song. Afterwards, the two go to a restaurant, and Su Ho tells his friend that she would like him to sing again and believes that Se Yun would want that too. Seo Joon reveals that if he had won the bet, he would ask his friend to allow him to reveal his feelings to the protagonist, so that she would reject him and the boy could move on. Su Ho meets up with his beloved later and at first acts like he's upset with her, but he soon gets back to normal and ends up blurting out that he loves her. At Su Jin's house, her father scolds her in that violent way once again, and the girl acts the same way. The next day, the teacher ended up sleeping at Hee Kyung's house, so he eats with everyone when it gets dark and is already considered part of the family. When the protagonist arrives at school, everyone is talking about Su Jin. It turns out that someone heard in the bathroom that she was the one who posted things about Joo Kyung on the forum, and that person decided to post about it there too. Su Jin runs out of the room, and the protagonist goes after her. Joo Kyung asks if she doesn't feel bad about what she did, and Su Jin says no. Even so, the protagonist proposes that they forget what happened and return to their friendship however, Su Jin says that she doesn't want that and goes on her way. But we see that the girl starts to cry a lot after hiding. Joo Kyung spends as much time as she can studying for her makeup course test and, in the end, manages to pass. To celebrate, she and Su Ho plan to take a trip to the beach. Seo Joon calls the protagonist and asks to meet her. He has something to tell her and says that she needs to go alone. Despite knowing what her friend has to say to his girlfriend, Su Ho encourages her to go. The two go to eat at a restaurant, and the boy says he needs love advice. He practically talks about the situation the three of them are in, but Joo Kyung doesn't understand that she and Su Ho are involved because he doesn't mention names. The protagonist even thinks he is referring to Su Ah because she is also dating. The next day is our couple's trip, and Su Ho leaves his cell phone at home so they can better enjoy each other's company. But something happens the boy's father ends up in the hospital for emergency surgery the man has a brain hemorrhage and as Su Ho left his cell phone at home, no one has been able to contact him. Returning to the couple's trip, the boy made a scarf for the protagonist with the wool she had given him, and the two had a very fun and romantic day. Hee Kyung goes to Seo Joon to make a proposal to the boy he simply took off on social media after he appeared in that public place because he lost the bet with Su Ho, and she wants Seo Joon to sign with her company to launch him into the world of music. Su Ho's father's right-hand man looks for Seo Joon to see if he can find out where the boy is and tells him what happened. The two spend the day looking for Su Ho, and at the end, Seo Joon discovers from Su Ah that the couple is at the beach. Coincidentally, Ju Kyung's cell phone was out of battery, so no one could contact either of them. Returning to the couple, Ju Kyung talks about the conversation he had with Seo Joon and talks about his theory that he thinks the girl he likes is Su Ah, which makes Su Ho burst out laughing. Seo Joon and the man manage to find the two on the beach and tell the boy what is happening. From that moment on, Su Ho had the feeling of fear of losing his father spread throughout his body, and the protagonist tried to give him a lot of support. At the airport, when it was time for them to say goodbye, as the boy was going to where his father was, Ju Kyung said that she loved him too, and the boy asked Seo Joon to take care of her while he was gone. 
As soon as Suho disappears from the protagonist's sight, she bursts into tears for fear that the boy's father won't survive, and Seo Jun tries to calm her down. In the next scene, we see that two years have passed and there is a class reunion. Everyone is drinking, but Ju Kyung is already very drunk, and the boys demand that her partner arrive to take care of the girl. When he walks through the door, we see that they were referring to Seo Jun. When Su Ho arrives at the hospital and goes to meet his father, the man says he's sorry about everything that happened and didn't think he would have the opportunity to do this. The boy took care of him and left his sorrows aside. His father commented that he had promised to buy them something delicious to eat the next time they met, but his son calmed him down, saying that when he gets better, he can do that. After a month, everything is ready for Suho to return to Korea, and the protagonist is looking forward to it. His father is now more stable, but he still won't be able to travel long distances. However, when the boy arrives at the hospital, the man is being rushed into surgery and will have to stay in the hospital for a while longer. Due to Suho's concern for his father, he didn't even remember to tell Ju Kyung that he wouldn't be able to return now, as they had agreed and the girl was waiting for him at the airport. A few days have passed, and the protagonist's last year at school has arrived. As soon as classes start, she discovers that Su Jin left the institution while they were on vacation. Ju Kyung is dedicating himself a lot to his studies to pass the entrance exams and had a setback when he got sick the girl even ended up in the hospital. So when Su Ho had some time and called his girlfriend, he discovered that she was hospitalized. The girl's mother answered the cell phone and informed him, and the boy got nervous. After all, the two most important people in his life are in the hospital. Hospital, and he can't do anything to change that. However, in the next few days, the protagonist had already improved, and when the two talk on a call, Su Ho brings up the subject of the end of their relationship. The boy doesn't think it's fair that his beloved keeps waiting for him he doesn't know when his father will get better and he won't abandon the man, but he also doesn't want to trap Ju Kyung in a relationship in which the boy can't be present for him. Even though the protagonist put her foot down and said that she would save money to go visit him and that she would also wait for him, Suho had already decided, but it was certainly something that broke his heart to do. A few days later, Ju Kyung goes to the comic book store and notices that there is something written underneath what she had written when she was little. Suho put it there that he is not a crybaby, a nickname she had given him, and wonders when the girl will realize who he is. He added that on the first day of snow, he will go to the highest point of the place to make a wish that the girl will remember him. They say that the first person to touch a snowflake will have it come true, and who told him that? She was the protagonist when they were little. As time passed, Ju Kyung started sending messages to the boy, telling him about his life, even though he didn't respond. After the entrance exams, the protagonist thought it was time to leave him alone. We see that Ju Kyung got an internship with a celebrity however, the person was not a very pleasant figure she treated the protagonist badly and kept bothering her so that she could get a date with Seo Joon, who was now a crowd sensation after his breakthrough in the music world. At the class meeting, Ju Kyung gets drunk and starts talking about her problems at work. Su Ah is the one controlling her, and we see that she is no longer dating Taehoon. At one point, the protagonist is almost asleep at the table, and they are wondering where Seo Jun is, as the boy who was responsible for Ju Kyung. After everyone is a little dizzy, Seo Jun decides that it's time to take the protagonist home however, on the way, he needs to stop to give the girl water otherwise, she'll throw away everything she drank. As soon as they are seated, Ju Kyung asks him to go out with the artist she is working with so that the protagonist does not have to suffer so much at work however, Seo Jun says that he has already refused and asks her to stop asking him to date other women. The boy can't believe that she still doesn't know how he feels about the two of them, and so Seo Jun pulls her in for a kiss. The next day, the boy is at the protagonist's house he ended up sleeping there because it was too late and her mother insisted that he stay. When Seo Jun is leaving, he asks if she doesn't remember what happened the night before and says that they kissed however, we see that in fact, after the boy pulled her away, he didn't continue and then went to her house. Seo Jun asks his beloved friend to forget what happened and what he said to her. The boy didn't want to declare himself to her like that, so he says that one day he will bring up the subject again, but in the right way. And Ju Young is together with Go Woon the two will find out today if they went to the college they wanted, and the first result to be read is that of the girl. Go Woon passes by and is so happy that she ends up kissing the boy on the cheek. She adds that they should even go on a date. However, as soon as Ju Young's result is read, the girl takes back what she said, as he didn't pass. The news in the family is that Hee Kyung and the teacher are engaged however, she doesn't fantasize about a wedding like the man and therefore doesn't pay attention to details like the dress, etc. Which makes the man a little upset. 
Meanwhile, Seo Joon and the protagonist are going out for dinner, so he meets her at her work and brings her flowers. The boy takes the opportunity to cut the artist who treats Ju Kyung badly he catches the jump that the girl had thrown for the protagonist to fetch and throws it even further, then says that since the artist has hands, she can go get it. Seo Joon takes the protagonist to a beautiful restaurant, and there he confesses once again that he likes her, but now he goes deeper and says that he has felt this way about her for three years. The boy wants to be given a chance to win her over and asks the two of them to go on three dates as a man and a woman to make this happen. After dinner, Seo Joon ends up buying medicine for the protagonist, as she wasn't feeling very well, and we can see that he takes very good care of her. At Ju Kyung's family house, the teacher is preparing a surprise with their help for Hee Kyung, and the mother decides to warn her daughter about it so she can pretend to cry a little and show more sensitivity, which is why your fiancé misses you. The protagonist decided to go to the highest point in the city to make a wish. As it started to snow, she came across a man very similar to Suho however, when he turned around, we saw that it was not the boy. But the protagonist finds him there and is speechless he is the one who goes to the girl and tells her that he went to the place as soon as he landed. Suho says that she returned to Korea because she missed Ju Kyung. And the protagonist lies when she says she didn't feel anything, then runs to leave the place. However, it happens that Ju Kyung, on the way, starts to feel sick, and Suho takes her to the hospital, where the news is given that the protagonist is like this because of constipation. With great shame and after being released, Ju Kyung hides inside Suho's hospital, and at the first opportunity she has, she goes home but is still hidden from the boy. However, she ends up ruining the surprise for her sister when she walks through the door in her place, and Hee Kyung wastes no time, arriving at the scene crying, showing that she is moved. Seo Joon decides to go to Suho's house, and the boy discovers there that his loved one and his friend ended up meeting by coincidence earlier. And the next day, Suho waits for the protagonist to leave to accompany her to work however, the girl is confused about everything that is happening and simply runs out to catch a taxi. At work, the boy shows up to do his hair, and Ju Kyung is already feeling uncomfortable with his presence. When the end of her shift arrives, Suho is no longer in the salon, and on the street, the protagonist ends up running into Seo Joon. The boy invites her for another date, which she accepts. The two go skating, and Ju Kyung ends up scratching her hand, so Seo Joon buys a bandage to put on it, which reminds her of when Suho took care of these little details when she was injured, and the girl says that she herself can put it on. They had bet on an ice race when the girl ended up getting hurt, and as soon as they were in front of the comic book store, about to say goodbye, Seo Joon won. He decided to use her wish and hugged her. Suho leaves the store at that moment and comes across the scene of the two hugging each other. Seo Joon waits for the boy to leave his sight to say goodbye to Ju Kyung. And he ends up meeting him when he is returning home. The two go out for a drink and put the truths on the table. The next day, the protagonist goes to the agency to wait for Seo Joon to leave his rehearsal. She sends a message saying that she needs to talk to the boy, and when he comes down, he says that he can't go on a date today, but for Ju Kyung, she saves what she wants to tell him for the next time they meet. Seo Joon once again shows himself to be a really nice guy and says that Su Ho plans to return to the USA, adding that the protagonist should go after him. Then the girl ran to Su Ho's house, and Seo Joon went to the stairs to cry. At Su Ho's residence, she hugs him as soon as she sees him and asks him not to go. At that moment, the protagonist discovers that it was Seo Joon's lie that Su Ho was going back to the other country. And Ju Kyung even decides to leave after that, but the boy offers him a ride home. In the vehicle, the protagonist asks, since he was going to return to Korea anyway, why he ended the relationship, and Suho responds that it would be very difficult for her to wait for him all this time. But she explains that it wasn't easy for him to go through the breakup either. Until he was thinking about a way to return, even if his father didn't get better, and the boy apologized for making his loved one suffer. On the way to Ju Kyung's house, things are calmer between the two, and Suho confesses that she liked her when they were both little. Before saying goodbye, the boy gives his beloved a kiss. The next day, the protagonist goes to dinner with Seo Joon, and he already knows what the girl is about to say, so he says that everything is fine he always knew that she hadn't gotten over Suho, and that's why there was no room in the room. Her heart to him. And he adds that Ju Kyung doesn't need to worry his debut is almost here, so Seo Joon won't have time to think about her anymore and will get over it. At work, the protagonist needs to impose herself on that artist the girl doesn't want to go through the same thing she went through at her old school, and when she does that, the artist's driver pushes her. At that moment, the most unexpected thing happened Su Jin appeared with his moves and taught the guy that he should never mess with the protagonist again. 
The two go out to talk, and after that, we discover that the girl and her mother went to live abroad at an aunt's house as her parents were getting divorced. Su Jin recently returned to Korea and wanted to apologize to Ju Kyung for all the pain he caused her. Being away from her father made the girl realize the wrong actions she was taking. And so the two made peace. He Kyung meets with Suho. The two talk about the song he made with Seiyun the woman wants to release it again to erase from people's minds what she was plagiarized for, and the boy wants to have the honor he deserved. Suho explains that she never studied music, but He Kyung encourages him to at least try, because if the record company doesn't like the boy's version, they simply won't release it. Regardless of the final result, He Kyung believes that Suho, with the pseudonym Leo, will be a big success. So as soon as Suho gets home, she works on the project. Meanwhile, the protagonist was not fired from her job, but on the contrary, her boss even thought her stance was right and ended up dismissing the artist for her mistreatment of the salon's employees. In the next few days, Ju Kyung decides to participate in a makeup contest to work within a company with bigger artists through the salon, and Suho finishes his version of the song he made with Seiyun and sends the project to the company. On her day off, the protagonist goes out with Su Ah to buy an outfit to wear to her sister's wedding, and then the two get skin care at Ju Kyung's house. Her friend thought Ju Kyung was going to date Su Ho, but she explains that the boy is going to meet Tae Hoon and says to let them have fun. However, the protagonist thinks that until she goes on social media and sees a photo that Tae Hoon posted saying that they were going to heat up the night in a bar. The two run out to find these boys and pull their ears however, when they find them, they actually go to a sauna and have some drinks there. Suho is very dizzy, so much so that he even looks silly, so Ju Kyung takes him home. Instead, after placing him in bed, the girl notices that on the boy's lamp there is the collectible sticker that she had given him for his first birthday that they spent together at the comic book store, and in the end, the two end up falling asleep. When the protagonist wakes up, it is already very late, and there are several calls from her lost mother on her cell phone, but there is also a message from Sua, who is a true friend, saying that she told Ju Kyung's mother that the girl I was sleeping at her house. Even so, the two even try to order a taxi for the protagonist to go home however, it turns out that there are none left on the street at that time. So Ju Kyung ends up staying, and the two spend the night lovingly. The next morning, Suho cooks for his loved one and returns to her the tale he had picked up at the comic book store at the beginning, when he revealed that he knew who she was. And the protagonist is surprised that he still has the object. In the next scene, we see the recording of Suho and Seiyun's song. Seo Jun will be the one doing the vocals, and it is a great tribute to the boy, with his two best friends included. After Suho and Seo Jun go to eat something together, Suho reveals that she is thinking about studying music so she can compose her songs better. And Hee Kyung's wedding finally arrived. On the same day, the results of the contest that Ju Kyung participated in also came out, but the girl ended up not passing because she wasn't as experienced as other participants. Su Jin marked her presence at the place and apologized to Sua too. In the bride's room, she tries on the ring before the wedding to see if it fits however, it ends up falling under a piece of furniture, and when Hee Kyung goes to pick it up, she ends up getting her head stuck. So the way was to go in with the cage around her neck, and as Hee Kyung doesn't get hung up on these details, she was happy and enjoyed her marriage that way. They both have a lot of fun, and so does everyone else present. And in the next few days, the debut of Seo Jun will take place. The protagonist's boss is doing his makeup, and Ju Kyung is acting as an assistant, getting whatever the woman needs. The girl receives an opportunity to finish her makeup, and her boss even engraves her name, which is wonderful since the woman is famous and this will open doors for her. In Seo Jun's presentation, everything went very well, and he was incredible. Su Ho was even moved to see her friend becoming what she always wanted and that they managed to honor Seiyun. In the end, our couple, Su Ho and Ju Kyung, even as adults, continued to go to the comic book store and spend hours there, just like they did when they were children and teenagers. What did you think of this season? I hope you liked the summary. Leave your suggestions in the comments and subscribe. If you liked the video, like and share to help me until next time.